Gunpla Network presents Master Grade Age One Normal. Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Zeta Kai, 2A's1Z, GunplaNetwork.com. And this time, we're going to be continuing our age discussion by stepping up from the high grades into the Master Grade realm and looking at this truly beautiful Master Grade Age One Normal. This kit was released in 2012 selling at the time for 3,500 yen. These days, it's going to set you back about 3,850 yen or thereabouts. And this kit is truly fantastic. In my eyes, it kind of took master grades at the time to the next level and contains things within it that were unseen before it and continue to be unseen after it in many kits. Spoiler alert, <laughs> I love this kit. If I had to describe the Master Grade Age 1 Normal in one word, the word would be extra. This kit is just a little bit extra. And what I mean by that is every little facet of this kit, everything you do moving it or building it is just has this little something extra, some extra little detail that's above and beyond what you would normally expect. For instance, let's start by taking a look at some of the details of the kit. So one thing that you're gonna notice on the kit are these little vents kind of everywhere, even the vents there in the face mask, but more notably the, the vents in the arms and the forearms and in the bicep there. Those are holes punched in the plastic. They aren't like panel line areas where you have to panel line those in. They're actual physical holes in the kit. And they add this whole other level of detail that wasn't there before. And that takes this kit just to that next level. It's just a little bit extra. Now, speaking of panel lines, this is an order kit of mine. It's built, it's panel lined. It has a little bit of detail work done to it. And that's why you haven't seen an unboxing. So bear that in mind as you uh, watch this review. So those details are really something special and something unique to this kit. Now, they're not exactly anime accurate. You won't see them definitely in the animation and even production images or concept artwork or anything like that you're not going to see those vents in a lot of them. But to me, they make this kit just that little bit extra, that little bit more special than it needs to be or that it should be. Another thing that this kit does really well is the color separation. The colors are, are anime accurate and the color separation is very, very good. In fact, there are very few stickers used for color separation. In fact, there's no stickers used for color correctness except for these black ones here on the fronts of the knees. And they work beautifully. I haven't had any problem with them in the years that I've owned the kit. Now, unfortunately, in the years that I've owned the kit, I've lost these stickers, the dry transfers on your left and the marking seals on your right. They'll add another level of detail if you want it. However, I opted for a more clean look on mine. You do get camera stickers and eye stickers, but I did not use those. I painted them to make use of those extra stickers that little extra detail in the sticker department are these silver stickers that are kind of sticky on the silver side. And what you do is you stick them on the back of all these translucent green parts, like the age symbol here in the chest. And it adds this layer of depth to those parts that make this kit look just that much more, just a little bit extra. Speaking of extra, if you want extra Gunpla and you want extra cool people, make sure you go to Canadian Gundam Dot com and use the coupon code Gunpla Network when you check out. And if you do so, you'll save 10% on your purchase of Groovy Plastic Robot. All right, so the articulation on this kit is amazing. It's outstanding. It is next level. You get a little disc here on the head that allows it to go forward and back 360 degrees. You get a joint in the collar. The shoulder joint is incredible so much movement in the shoulder up down spinning around forward and back it does so much i'll show you a little bit later uh, another little trick that it has shoulder armor goes up has some great detail underneath it that's nice you don't have to paint that that's gray and you get a lot of range of mobility out of the arms they they can do so much they can spin 360 degrees you get a bicep swivel you get very, very nice uh, elbow joint, a full 180 out of it. Another extra little bit is the 
forearm rotation that allows you to put the shield in different spots. The wrists are different. They have a little bit of extra. They have this little disc that allows you to rotate the palm up and around that disc in addition to spinning 360 degrees and in addition to the other joint spinning 360 degrees and wiggling. You also get a thumb joint that has two joints in it. One and two. You get some ab crunch. It's probably the weakest part of the articulation. You don't get as much as maybe you do in some other more modern kits. But for all intents and purposes, it's fine. You're not going to need it. And adding more ab crunch there, I think, would make the kit less stable. You get this really cool gimmick for the cockpit opening. You flip this down and then the little screen flips up. And of course, you get a little flit in there. You can put a seated flit. The front skirts are special. They're mounted by two ball joints, not just one. And they have this little separation gimmick. Now, that's more for transferring it or transforming it into Titus or Spalo mode, but it does allow you to move the legs a little more freely. Side skirts are completely independent, move all around. The back skirts are on double hinges instead of single hinges. They move a lot. They untab as well as the front, as well as the front ones do, and just allow you more freedom. So much freedom and range of movement. The hips are special. They have this disc in there too that allows you to rotate around that orbit that allows you to move the leg from this far into the back and then you can kind of move it and rotate it forward so that then it's attached at the hip very far forward a 360 degree bicep or bicep <laughs> 360 degree thigh a ridiculous split and a lot of movement back and a lot of movement forward, only inhibited by the skirt armor there. It could go much further and you can get it that way if you move the skirt armor to the side. A very fine double jointed knee with a little movement right there in the knee armor. It doesn't move up to cover the gap, but it looks fine. It is completely filled in there. There's no hollow spots. The ankles are very good pivoting on a, a ridiculous like universal joint with double ball joints at each end which allow it to be very naturally moved around the ankles a little bit of movement here in the ankle armor and toes up and down and forward and back on the feet moving on to accessories the accessories are all great you get beam saber hilts that you can stow in the side skirts i'll show you that in a moment and you get hands to hold the beam saber hilts and they work very well this has like the uh, wing style hands where the fingers pop on and off while leaving the palm and thumb intact it's actually one of my least favorite designs but it works well enough and it's super stable uh, it never is going to drop those hilts i've never had it happen in fact it's very hard to get the hilts out of the hand if i'm being honest you get the really cool short beam shank the beam shiv and you get the long beam sword, beam saber, I guess. Both of these are the uh, rectangular ports, as are all the age kits. They plug in very securely, very tight fit in the hilts. Both of them, both the short and the long, they both work exactly the same as you'd expect. I don't know why I'm spending so much time looking at them. Get on with it. All right, so you have the dots rifle and it looks great. It does everything that you would expect the DOTS rifle to do and a little bit more that you're not expecting being that little extra for the accessories. So you can spin it. You can spin this around 360 degrees for the different modes of the rifle firing or whatever it is. I don't really remember that, but you can do it. It has a fold out handle for bringing the other arm over, which the articulation makes great use of. I'll show you that in a moment. You can pop it apart and have a little like beam pistol. It's really nice. You get uh, translucent green for both sets of cameras and you get those silver stickers for both of those cameras to put behind them. So it doesn't matter what mode you have it in. You still have nice clear green sights. You get a movable handle, the grip with the trigger. And it has this great articulation here. This little piece on the end tabs into the forearms. They have a little port that that pops into and it moves 360 degrees so you can have the arm holding the blaster at different angles and it still stays secure. You of course get trigger finger hands that have a little slot and that slot goes into 
that slot and you can put that anywhere up and down the grip which is nice it's not like one little spot that you have to find you can put it anywhere and it as the other hands do holds very securely you get a pair of closed fists and they look great and you get a pair of open expressive hands they do tend to fall out it's probably one of the weakest parts of the whole kit you get a beautiful shield. I love the design of the age shield. Completely filled in the back as you would expect on a master grade. It doesn't do a whole lot. It just spins on this little tab right here. But really, what else do you need? The forearms moving around and that rotation really helps you to get the shield in very, very cool poses. You get an action base connector. Works well. You can actually pick it upside down with that action base connector attached and it won't fall off. So here's the beam saber hilts as they store on the side skirts crazy secure most times i pull the hilts apart before i pop them off the peg so they're in there to stay works very well you also get this little flip down tab on the back and that's for the spall over okay so that's it for the accessories let's take a look at how they work with the kit and how the kit looks in action and everything works beautifully all of the accessories can be equipped to the Gundam in any way that you want. And it always holds them up, always holds them secure, stable. Just like everything else with this kit, it all works very intuitively so that you can pull off anything you want. The only limits to what you can do with this kit are what you can imagine. And the kit is very, very stable. There are a lot of polycaps used in the construction of the kit. And I know there's a lot of hand wringing about overuse of polycaps and kits and I know Bandai has got away from that in recent years however take a look at this this kit is eight years old seven or eight years old at this point and here it is standing up on one foot now there are a lot of kits that I can stand up on one foot and get to balance and they look fine but there are very few kits that I can put on one foot and have them spin on my turntable for minutes at a time without them falling or sagging at all and the age one normal can do it with eight-year-old polycaps so I wouldn't worry too much about the kit getting floppy or loose or the joints kind of falling apart over time. This kit has been played with a lot by me, by my son, over the years, and it still holds up great. The only thing that I do have an issue with is this, the open expressive hands. They don't peg on the same way as the other hands. They only have one tab instead of two and they fall off all the time. Now I said about this little shoulder trick that the kit does, so take a look at it. We have a little hole here and there's a tab and you can slot the tab on the shoulder joint into that hole. And what this does is it gives more stability to the kit. It allows you to hold up weight with the arm without it sagging at all. Again, even seven or eight years old and the kit can still pull this off with no difficulty at all. And not only that, you have the port on the forearm that tabs in on the bottom of the handle there and as you can see here you don't even need to hold it with the hand and it'll hold that gun perfectly perfectly horizontal just via that little tab and port in the forearm and then you also get the grip on the side that you can bring the other hand in you add more stability to it stability is another word that i would use to describe the age one normal it's very, very stable. Again, more extras, all these little extra details. You didn't have to have the locking tab or the handle that moves around and stays secure. That's a little bit overkill, but it makes the kit so, so much better. While we have the dots rifle, let's take a look at one other little thing. You have this little tab here that you pop down and you can store the dots rifle on the back skirt. It's not in that flip down hinge for the Spalo. It's just a little port right there and it pops in. Now, I would say if you're taking it in and out of that a lot, you're going to you're going to wear that out over time. So the wonderful way that all of these accessories work combined with the balance of the kit and its inherent stability, make it a great kit to be posed on your desk or on your shelf. However, you don't have to put it on the ground. It comes with that action base connector and it looks great in the air as well. I wanted to talk about the shield a little bit because I really like the design of the shield and I like the way that the kit utilizes the shield. I know it doesn't seem that special, it just has that simple tab and spin system, but that combined with the way that that forearm rotates allows you to not have the shield inhibit any pose that you think of and allowing the shield to complement 
what you have in mind for the kit. There are a lot of kits that have shields that are kind of obtrusive, not so with the H1 normal. Now let's talk a little bit about comparisons to other kits. So here we have the Master Grade Age 1 Normal with the Master Grade Stormbringer and the Turn A Gundam. And I wanted to compare it to these because first of all, they're kind of in the same kind of color palette, but also I wanted to talk about proportions. The Stormbringer's head looks a little small and the Turn A's legs are long because of its design. It's a, it's a Katoki um, redo for the Master Grade. But I think the Age 1 Normal has perfect proportions. Ebikawa's design is almost flawless in my opinion. And even compared to other Age 1 variants, like the Robot Damashi here on the left and the High Grade on the right, the Robot Damashi is like a slimmed down Evangelion style, and the High Grade's kind of bulky and boxy, but I think the Master Grade strikes that perfect balance of muscular looking, like athletic mobile suit that's powerful. I think the Master Grade is definitely the best looking version of the Age 1 normal. To say nothing about the advanced grades and all the other different variants that came out during the time. I also wanted to talk about its complexity. Now here's the Master Grade Gyan and it's a, it's a complex Master Grade, don't get me wrong. The inner frame is crazy on the Gyan. However, if you look at it, the, the, the H1 looks like a completely different model line because of all the detail all over the kit. And I know the Gyan's kind of going for that anime accurate kind of smooth look. But when you put them side by side, especially with the dynamic posability of the Age 1 Normal, it just looks like something else. Again, something a little bit extra and special. That's one thing I really want to highlight about the Age 1 is the articulation is fantastic. But the way that the articulation works is something that's truly unique. A lot of kits are very articulate. A lot of master grades are very articulate. And you can put them in a lot of poses, but every time you go to put them in those poses, you really have to think about, okay, I need to move this joint here, and how, wait, how does that joint work again? Oh yeah, and I have to move this armor piece to move that joint. And you really have to think about the poses that you're putting it in. And that's not the case with the Age 1 Normal. The way that it works is so intuitive that whenever you wanna put it into a pose, you just think about basically the way the human body moves, and you just grab the arm or leg or whatever and you move it that way and it works. And that's definitely what the Age 1 Normal does best is articulation. This is a super articulate model kit. Now that doesn't say that the only thing that it does well is articulation. The details as I've mentioned over and over again are amazing. They are master grade quality. The build process is super fun. There aren't really any parts that I have to warn you about or things that you have to make sure that you do right. It's very straightforward. It's a great kit for people who want to get into the Master Grades. This is a great one to get into, especially because of the price point. In fact, speaking of the price point, comparing this Master Grade to other kits in its price range, the Master Grade Age 1 blows them away for the most part. Most master grades that you're going to find in this price range are older kits uh, that have older engineering. They don't have as great articulation. There's always something messy about the construction. I think probably the closest competitors to it are like the GM2, the Gym Command, things like that. Maybe the Zaku 2.0s. And even they have their construction issues. I, I think the Master Grade Age 1 Normal is something very special. It's not the most flashy kit on the shelf, but it does everything super well. So don't overlook it, even though you may be sour on Gundam Age. In fact, let us know down below what some of your favorite aspects of Gundam Age are. And remember to subscribe to Gunpla Network. And as always, keep building, everyone.